Howdy, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Change Room Podcast. I'm Colton Burbridge, and uh, we're about to get into it. This is my co-host slash producer, uh, Kieran. How's it going? Good, man. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode six. We've been away for a little while. Took a little little break. Yeah. Uh, but I've been uh, just fucking busy working. How about yourself? Same, dude. Busy working. Got in a couple of races last weekend. So I had a really busy weekend, which is why I didn't really make a podcast last week. Last week. But um, super fun. Good time. We'll get into it a little bit after we get some motocross stuff covered. But yeah, it's been a good couple of weeks. Just really busy, working hard, trying to keep up on you know, bills and everything. So thank you all for tuning in. Glad everybody's here listening. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. If you could uh, send out our word to any uh, moto lovers out there, if you have any friends in the moto world, let them know. We love to get more people in here and uh, part of our community. So first things first, get into some motocross stuff. Um, Super cool uh, thing going on right now with uh, World Supercross. There's a lot of news coming out with new teams, new riders, people coming back from retirement. All these really cool <clears throat> things for World Supercross that are, uh, it's going to be really fun to watch, I think. It's going to be, they're going to announce the um, first round tomorrow, I guess, is what I heard from Vital. But um, it's supposed to, supposedly in uh, the UK somewhere. Um, but they, they're going to drop in at the UK and uh, Australia for two rounds, I think. So I think they're going to do this uh, kickoff year with three rounds for World Supercross. A lot less payout, a lot less um, winnings for the winners and all that kind of stuff, just because if it's a new thing, we'll see how it goes. But uh, eventually they want to have a stage in most big countries where um, a lot of motocross racers come from and everything. So... It'll be cool to watch. First off, uh, with the news, Moto Concepts Honda announced their World Supercross team uh, last week. Um, and that is going to have Justin Brayton, which he just retired from Supercross this year. So, and he's not doing motocross. So, he's pretty much done with those two um, race series. And so, he's joining up with Moto Concepts Honda to race the three rounds. Um, it's going to be super cool to see him back. He's still really fast. He's an older guy. He's probably one of the oldest guys going to be out there, so that's going to be really cool. They've got Mitchell Oldenburg, which has been a huge uh, success in the in the 250 scene, um, and now he's in the 450 scene. But um, really awesome on a dirt bike. He's a super cool guy. He's not uh, well-known yet, but I'm sure he'll get up there eventually. He's uh, really fast, so I'm excited for that. Vince Fries, enough said about that douchebag. And then uh, Cole Seeley. Cole <laughs> Seeley. Cole Seeley is probably one of my favorite riders ever. Um, he retired, I want to say, three or four years ago. Not quite sure when he retired. But um, he had a Supercross win. He had a 250 title. He was just a badass on a dirt bike. He, he doesn't have a huge um, career, career re- winning you know, list and all that stuff, but he was always podium. He was always top 10. He was right there in the mix with everybody. And he was probably one of the coolest guys out there. He has a YouTube channel right now and um, you guys can go check it out. It's just Cole Seeley on YouTube. He's super fun to watch and um, get into, but this Moto Concepts team is going to be cool. Um, I haven't heard much from any other teams. Uh, One other rider that we know is going to be in it is going to be Ken Roxon. He commits to 2022 World Supercross. He didn't announce a team with his commitment, but um, it's probably going to be HRC Honda. I don't think they'll let him ride any other bike. It's going to be pretty interesting if they do. I, I don't think they would, but if it, they don't want to go through with this and he he's committing doing it by himself, I'm sure Honda's probably going to lease him out of dirt bike or give him one to go into their contract with him or something like that. And then, it's just interesting when they give out bikes like that because they don't want anybody working on their bike. They don't want their brand new bikes. People in the normal world don't have these bikes. So random people tinkering on their bikes they don't really like. So they might let someone that Ken Roxon just hires to be his mechanic, but they'll probably give Kenny a mechanic for 
for that World Supercross team. So, also another, not, not World Supercross, but more normal Supercross, Motocross, Hunter Lawrence signs a two-year extension with HRC Honda, which is super cool for him. Him and his brother Jet are going to keep going on um, HRC Hondas and probably freaking kill it because this last round at um, High Point, Hunter went 1-2 for second place overall, and Jet went 2-1 for first place overall. So they're really battling each other. They, they're like the two fastest guys on the track, period. You can't really beat them like when they're winning. They might be battling each other like they were at High Point, but they're about 30, 40 seconds ahead of the rest of the pack. They're pretty insane. So it's really cool to see that uh, Hunter gets to keep going with uh, HRC Honda. So that he can stay with his brother. They don't even split up or anything. So that's really cool for them. I got an honorable mention, uh, Seth Hamaker. He's been in and out of it for a long time. He's uh, been not so good <clears throat> this motocross season so far. But he went 4-6 for 6th place overall when he's usually maybe a 20, a little bit less than 20 place guy. So that's really cool to see him back. He's uh, known for winning uh, Daytona Supercross um, last year two years ago, I think for team green for pro circuit cows hockey. So really cool dude. So I'm excited to see all of this go down. What about you? Yeah, man. <clears throat> Season's been crazy so far. Um, it's going to be a good rest of the season season for sure. Uh, I'm glad to see the, Lawrence brothers staying on the Hondas. They're killing it. They've been killing it on that bike. And it's a good look for Honda. Um Yeah, it'll be it'll be really cool. Um Roxon also committing to HRC Honda will be uh very good for them, especially in the world supercross scene. Uh, hopefully that he does pretty good out there for them. That'll be interesting to see what uh, what he's how how he compares to uh, riders from around the world and see what that looks like. Mm-hmm. It'll yeah, because he came be from badass. he came from the European circuit before, um, and he's won championships against Caroli, against uh, Jeff Hurlings and stuff. One of the best riders on the planet. So he's kind of, when he was younger, he came from that side of the that side of the water and I came over here to try our shit and uh, he's been a pretty awesome dude and to go through this stuff that he's gone through with destroying his hands on multiple occasions and his doctors telling him he can never ride again on multiple occasions to coming back and he won a supercross this year and so far he's I I think he's won a motocross but he's been up there and in the lead for most supercrosses but, um, yeah, what happened to him was super gnarly. He he had a super bad crash in Supercross three years ago that pretty much took him from a triple right into the face of the landing and uh, broke both of his arms and destroyed his hands and everything and was out for a long time, destroyed all his ligaments and everything. And then as soon as he was back on the bike, I think he was only a couple of races in, his hand... Uh, his right hand got sucked into a swing arm of a tire. And I don't think initially that's what did his injury, but he ripped his arm out because he was being dragged by this dirt bike. And he was like frantically trying to get his arm out of the swing arm of this dirt bike. It was just in between the tire and the swing arm, super gnarly, but it totally pulled every ligament out of every finger. So all five fingers, the ligaments were completely torn out and in his forearm. And so he literally had no physical capability of moving his hand. So to come back from that kind of stuff, to do those surgeries on your hands like that, and then hold on to a Honda 450 for a whole Supercross round or any motocross round is insanely impressive. So to see him coming back is a miracle. And to see him keep riding is really cool. I mean, I have a little toy dirt bike of him right behind me that I still have in the package. And he's one of my favorite riders. So I'm really glad he's back and and killing it. 
I'm excited to see what he does for the World Supercross. He's he's going to be running with the top. He's uh, Right now, he doesn't have any super bad um, competition yet with people not announcing everything. I'm sure everybody's waiting for where the first round is and if they can set, put it in with their schedule with Supercross coming up because they're doing it right in between motocross and Supercross. So with Americans... And people doing the American circuit and Supercross and then having motocross to add a third series to their life, it would be hell because they've, they're training nonstop 24 days a week, every year, you know, like all year long, 24 days a week. I said 24 hours, seven days a week, (laughs) (laughs) but still, I mean, to add this series, they're going to need a lot uh, different types of riders. So like what, Moto Concepts is doing with the retired guys. They have Mitch Oldenburg and Vince Fries that aren't retired, but they're not really like super high up in the ranks. So Supercross and Motocross, you could say. So it's, it'll be cool to see. I'm excited that he's uh, doing this. He's I want to r- watch him ride more. So one cool thing to add to Motocross, I've heard a lot of rumors about J-Law coming back for the end of the Motocross series. You don't know who J-Law is. He is Jason Lawrence. If uh, you're big into Supercross, you would know who he is. He's uh, one of those guys that was predicted to be like Bubba Stewart. He was the most talented guy on a dirt bike for many years. He he got himself into trouble a few times. He was kind of a screw everything attitude. He he didn't have the best attitude. It was kind of like when he was on podiums or doing race speeches and stuff, he was just always like, you know, I don't care. Like, I'm just here to win and, and kick everybody's ass. And he's kind of like the skater boy of Supercross. You know, it's got the chill, <laughs> lean back, kind of like don't give a F about anything. So... I think it'd be really cool to see him back. I never really got to see him uh, race because, I, I mean, I was too little. He raced with Ryan Villapoto, and I remember Ryan Villapoto very vividly. I mean, he was, he's been my favorite rider f- for my whole life. Ryan Villapoto can't – no one can t- uh, touch Ryan in my eyes. But um, J-Law did, and he was really good. And if he would have kept going, he probably would have been rivals with Ryan Villapoto a lot. So – It'll be cool to see him back. So all your Supercross motocross nerds, if you if you're interested in that, it'll be really cool to hear and see. Yeah. I don't know if you mentioned it yet, but uh, the first round announces tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully it does. That's what everybody thinks. I guess that's on their schedule. So, so, so vital says. I yeah. guess so, dude. I want to go to Big Hill Jam so bad. Me too. I've been seeing some, you know, since Big Hill Jam happened this last weekend, I've been seeing <clears throat> all these guys come out on Instagram and TikTok showing off their uh, big hill climbs that they've been doing. And I don't know about you, but that's like one of my favorite things about riding dirt bikes, fucking trying to make it up giant ass hills. I know it's like the best. I love thing that ever. shit. It is so much fun, and it is so much fun. And Big Hill Jam, I've seen it before in the past um, on YouTube. Uh, it looks like a fucking blast. That's for sure. It does. I've driven by it's the hectic. hill compound before. It was a long time ago. It was like 2016 or something like that. 2017. But uh, we, my whole family drove down to San Francisco for Supercross for, um, yeah, it had to be 2017 at least. For Supercross. But we, yeah, for Supercross, we drove down there and because they didn't come to Seattle that year, they took it off the, the schedule. So we went down to San Francisco to watch Supercross. It was really fun. Um, on our way there and on our way back, we drove, so the highway that, I'm pretty sure I don't think it's I five. It's 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 a big highway, but it literally drives right along their property. And if you go to Buttery Films uh YouTube on his vlog, he made a vlog about Hill, Big Hill Jam. It was freaking sick. I love Buttery's vlogs and he just really gets into everything. 
And uh, in all in the background of all those vlogs, you just see cars driving by all day because it's literally right on the side of the highway. And uh, yeah. when I drove by, it was a house and a massive dirt bike track, but it's really overgrown with grass and stuff. And now the way that the, the things that they've done to that place, they have massive, massive freestyle section for whip contests and stuff. They have a huge pit bike track for pit bike racing. And then they have the massive hill climb and they have high jump as well, but they have the massive hill climb for, and they do major hill climb races. And these guys, they're not like locals, right? These guys are like freestyle guys and uh big, uh, hill, um, it's an X hill Games. Guys. It, yeah. Hill climb guys. It's an X, there's a name for it in X games or anything, but, um, like literally pros, like a ton of pros come out to this thing. And it's like, they've made it an actual event on the, on the sheet, dude. They, all these pros want to come to this place. All the freestyle guys want to come do the whip contest. Cause it's actually big money and they get to go out there, have a blast with a ton of local people and people from all over the world or country. And, uh, just absolutely hang out party all weekend long. And it looks so much fun. And, uh, super family friendly there's kids everywhere the pit bike tracks open all the time it's like whole families go there and just camp like this whole hillside is all campers and everything and yeah go check out buttery's buttery's vlog because it's freaking sick it's like it's super cool to watch and i don't know we got to go next year we have to it's not even that far yeah, from that, me but it's really that uh me. that place is yeah uh, that place is really cool i haven't seen this year's video but i watched it last year and it looks badass. All the they do like little pit bike races and whatnot, and then the hill climb stuff's just so cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know, Nasty. but there is a hill climb place out in in Idaho. I think it's outside of Coeur d'Alene. It's called the Big Nasty. That place is pretty crazy too. They uh, do some fun. gnarly hill climbing out there. Yeah. Oh yeah. I w- I'd love to go out there. I was I was thinking about that that today. I was like, I was watching these TikTok videos. I was like, damn, I'd love to just get just a four fifty and <clears throat> and put a extended swing arm on it just for hill climbs. Yeah, it'd, it'd be, be so, so fun. fun. I mean, I don't even really need one to be honest. I mean, if you're trying to if you're trying to get up a hill at, like for timed events and if you're doing an event yeah i could see yeah doing like a long swing or stuff but even just a normal bike. i mean like that's what i've seen because they were doing that in the video like they i've gone up a lot of crazy shit bikes. before <laughs> yeah i mean i've gone up a lot of crazy shit on just a regular ass swing arm yeah stock engine i mean if you have the run up for it you it, you can make it up a lot of crazy shit mm-hmm. but yeah, it's be fun. Really fun i want to start doing more sure. of those like enduros and stuff to have all the sweet hill climbs and everything. We have some super mountainous terrain and there is some gnarly hill climbs around my house and stuff, but it's hard to find new ones or even like try to build them because, you know, a lot of places are either too steep or it's not enough. And I'm sure I could go out there and build a super sick hill climb, gnarly hill climb stuff. We got some cool ones around here, but Sometimes all, like our woods are so tight that you'd be like weaving in and out of trees while you're trying to climb a hill. It's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. Oregon is really got some really nice hill climbs out there. Yeah, they've got a set up out sure. there. It's pretty sweet. They ended up they have a huge I mean, trailer. I, but a lot of those. Go ahead. A lot of well, not 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 that part of Oregon. I was talking about like Bend, Oregon. Oh yeah. Like just out in the desert and like whatnot. china hat but a lot of those places are like uh yeah china hat a lot of those places are like like almost like lava rock pebble hills yeah which they actually they have here in uh arizona up towards flag it's called uh cinders cinder hills it's just lava rock hills it's it's almost the same thing it's just like four four to five hundred foot just pebble hills it's crazy. That's so fun. Yeah. It is pretty awesome. Like, there's a lot of hill climb stuff around here. Like, I have hills around here that are really, you know, tight woods and everything. But it's super fun to go over to, to go over uh, 
east into Mattawa and stuff and Moses Lake and all that. And Mattawa, oh, yeah. there's some sick hill climbs. Like like you were saying with Oregon Bend and stuff, heavily, but Mattawa is like really sandy when you get down sandy. to the base and stuff. Yeah. So it's like you're almost going up a dune practically. So you're just revved out just trying to get your bike up these hills and everything. It's wide open. It's nice, but it's super sandy. So it's like it's actually kind of it's harder to keep the bike upright and everything just because your rear end's going everywhere and it's mm-hmm. you can't really you have to like point and shoot practically you can't be moving around your front tire a lot because it's just going to kick you side to side really fast we'll so. have to uh post a clip on our instagram so you guys can see yeah what we're talking about i have a cool hill climb out there in Mattawa. Mattawa, but that's about it i mean i have a couple videos of here too that's Pretty cool. I have a funny one. It's already on my TikTok, but I'll, we could post it on the Change Everyone as well. Yeah, I love hill climbing. Uh, it's it's so much fun. It's definitely easier going up than it is going down. That's for sure. Oh no, I like going down too. That's that's kind of really fun when you're like mobbing through the woods and all of a sudden you come on like a freaking super steep drop. And you just yeah, send it. True. You just yeah. send it, and you're like holding the back brakes, like t- t- chopping the back wheel, t- 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 all the way down. You chain slapping your swing arm. And you... <coughs> Speaking of freaking hill climbs, dude, I raced um, Washougal last Sunday. Um, not the Washougal thing you're thinking of, or anybody else. It's uh, the Nork series that I'm doing. They do a round at Washougal, and it's really cool because everybody thinks of Wash Google and they think of the motocross track, right? And there's like massive motocross tracks, one of the best motocross facilities in the whole state of Washington. And uh, the amount of trails out and around that, that track is crazy. They've got more than eight or nine miles of trails just out in the back. And that's not even half of it. We didn't uh. even touch most of it. So it's pretty badass. We, we, They've made a huge vintage and uh, side-by-side track, and we were riding on that too. But, um, yeah, it was badass. There were some gnarly, gnarly drops and hill climbs. Like, we, that first lap I was going out, I was sending it down this hill, and all of a sudden I was vertical, and I was like, holy shit. And I'm, like, chopping my back brake. It's, like, sliding down, and, and as soon as it hits the bottom, it 90s or lift immediately. So I'm like – seeing where this thing is going. I'm about to go into this tree in front of me and my, I get my bike to where I'm sliding down sideways so that when I land, I can keep going on the trail instead of go straight and smack into this tree. <laughs> and so it was super cool. I mean, they added those sections. It was good. And I was like, I was like four laps in and the leaders were coming to lap me is uh, uh Leighton Smale and Blake best were right behind me at this point. And, they're coming up on me so freaking fast. They're doing this thing where they're sending themselves down this hill and they're like speeding up down the hill. I was like, what the hell? How is this even happening? I hit the bottom sideways and I kind of like, I'm all messed up and everything because I can't do it as well as they can. But he lands right on the inside of me sideways and just takes off right in front of me. I was blown away. And then Blake Best passed me right behind Leighton, stuffed me into this berm going uphill again. And just sending it up this hill, just all wet, whacked out, just like legs off the bike and and asses all the way over to the left. But he's still four throttle on a freaking 450 going through the woods. It blows my mind. I wish I could ride like that, but it was really fun. I had a blast. Me and Elijah teamed the long course and got third. So it was a, it was a fun weekend. It's pretty good. Yeah. Dang. You get a trophy? No, no. They only went to second for some reason. There's only six medal? guys in the class. Oh, this damn. One. So they only went to second place. But and all the other ones, I mean the first uh-huh. the first three rounds, there's like twelve, eleven people in the class. So I was or teams. So I was like, oh that's freaking weird. But I don't know why there was so little. I think the reason there was so little is because it was like ninety eight degrees the whole day. It was so hot. Oh, and yeah. especially in Washington. That I mean, that's, I know you live in Arizona, that's hot it's hundred and ten. But, like, I was coming into the pits giving my armband to Elijah, and I took a ice-cold water bottle out of the, out of the 
cooler and was dumping it on my head. I was dying. It was so hot. But I can't imagine doing like an endurance. I really want to, but I can't imagine doing an endurance race in Arizona. That would suck ass. That'd be terrible. Yeah, that'd be miserable. It would doing a whole endurance. The imagine sun's racing for thing. like two hours straight in a hundred and ten degree weather. I don't think you could. They, pro- they probably do. Bible I mean, blow Arizona Cycle Park. They do it. They do endurance races there. I guess you should do one. And tell me uh, how it is. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> you should. Do it for me. Uh, Do it for me. I'm going to build an indoor track where they got AC. <laughs> You're going to build an arena cross track? All right, all right there. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'll Dude. ride an arena cross and some fucking AC. Whatever. What the? I'll ride all day in there. Stop crying. Go out nah, and ride. Nah, that's cool. Um, you need to ride. Yeah, I don't have funds for something to ride. I did another I race on Friday. Bills. I know, right? I did another race on Friday at uh, Pacific Raceways. It was really fun. They have a really cool track there. They got uh, all new uh, sponsorships and owners and everything. I guess that uh, Sean, or not Sean, what's his name? It's His last name is Duvall, you know, Duvall Racing. Oh, yeah, they own Duvall Racing. Uh, yeah, so the owner of Duval Racing is now a uh, part owner of the motocross track at Pacific Raceways now. So he runs really? everything at uh, Pacific, and now they're doing the Friday night series every Friday night. So I did that last Friday. It was really fun. I did the I had to do the college boy class because I have a 350, and so I couldn't do any other class. They didn't have any open classes, which kind of sucked. But um. I think this this week I'm gonna do the 450 D class because Schoolboy was really hard or College Boy was really hard. There's a bunch of kids, 17 year olds that were there every weekend. They're going getting Loretta's tickets and they're fucking schooling me <laughs> on the 350. <350. laughs> so yeah, yeah, this this I'm gonna go tomorrow and probably do the 450 D class. I'm excited. I'll, I I want to do two classes. I want to do four races, but we'll see. It's a lot of work. It's motocross is so hard. <laughs> it's so much effort. You get you're just so tired after after you're done with that race. It's it's exhausting. I do not know how pros do it. Thirty minutes straight, dude. It's gnarly. Shut up, <laughs> pussy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard. Oh, I don't see you do it then. Get out of here. Get out of here with your little uh, KDX 200 and hit that hey, triple. Hey, 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 hey. Maybe. Go hit that massive step yeah. up on your little KDX. Soon, man. I'm working on it, all right? I paid the truck off, paid off the credit card, and I just got like $6,000 in tools to pay off and then like <laughs> $4,000 welder. And then then I could put a down payment on a bike. Jesus. It'll just give me a few months. A few months that's it so i'm coming down yeah. th- this winter and we're going riding on your new bike yeah <laughs> hopefully pinky promise i i'm not I'm just promising gonna get my anything. bike down there i gotta drive my bike down there again i ain't driving yeah. shit with these gas prices hell no I ain't oh down there. fuck no i am paying fuck uh, I got an 18 gallon tank. I am paying right now $110 every three days. Holy just shit. Just tried working back. I'm flying through gas in that fucking truck. How much is, how it's much bad. is unleaded where you are? The lowest. It actually just, it actually just went down. It's five, six right now. Holy shit. That's like, more than us. It, it was at like, Five nine six. That's more than uh, us, last dude. week. That's insane. I don't know what's wrong with Arizona. I'm paying but, uh, seventy dollars. Everything has skyrocketed. It's stupid. everything has skyrocketed here to the moon. I mean, you can't go to freaking McDonald's and get a fucking Happy Meal without spending twenty dollars. So, and then like. Bike prices are all. I was looking at bikes too. I'm always looking at bikes. Everything's marked up. 
used markets all marked up crazy, insane. Cars yeah. are all marked up, insane. You can't buy that a shit right now. Yeah, financing would be. And you don't make any more money good right now, is, just because uh, interest pay, or, uh, loans are cheap right now. Interest but, rates. Yeah, that's because everything's marked up yeah, so high. I'd rather wait for everything to go back down and then just pay it in cash. So. Yeah, definitely. We'll get a. We'll be getting a bike soon. Hopefully by winter time, when it's nice and cool out, we can go riding a bunch. Hell yeah. I really want to go to like Arizona Cycle Park. Filmer. Right? Yeah, I have a GoPro. Even, I've lived here for I've lived here for like four years now or something like that, four or five years. I have never even stepped foot on that park. Yeah, I really want to go. Even though it's it two like miles blast. down the street. Yeah, I know. You're so close to it. Yeah. I wish I was close to a dirt bike track like that. That place is badass. You have a dirt bike track in your yard. Yeah, yeah. It's also <laughs> fucking got shit. You two dirt bike tracks in your yard. They're shit. Back up the, the state the lane. tracks that you can ride in for all... hundreds of miles. Oh, whatever. I mean, like a hard Hire someone to maintain track. it. No. Yeah. Could do it myself, but diesel's too expensive. Oh, uh, that's true. Diesel here is like six two, six three. So I don't really feel like buying diesel for the excavator and the dozer and shit to to do that. Yeah. What are you doing for fourth of July? Fourth of July, um, I ain't doing jack shit. I'm gonna go pick up some twisted tees, get hammered. Go get some smearing off tall to blow boys. My hand dude, up with a firework. That sounds fucking disgusting. They're amazing. The blue raspberry. You need to go ones. get some high noons. Yeah, I do. I if y'all to haven't tried high noon seltzers yet, they are amazing. Best damn seltzer out there by far. They taste delicious. They don't taste like some artificial bullshit. Better than Happy Dad? They don't Dad? even taste like seltzer water. <laughs> I didn't like Happy Dad at all. A thousand percent better than Happy Dad. Um, but yeah, that's my plan. I'm going to go pick up some of those. Um, might climb on the roof of the house, watch some fireworks. That's, I've never even we'll seen see those. I don't even it. know if I can get them. Maybe I can go to Total Line and find them. I might be able to do yeah, that. Yeah, that's where you can get them, probably. Yeah. Or a gas station. They're everywhere. Yeah. All righty. Anyway, I, I got some... this one up. Well, I, I guess I got some... one more thing. One more thing. Okay. Let's the Erzberg Rodeo. You ever heard of it? Yeehaw! No, I have not. <laughs> the er- You haven't heard of the Erzberg Rodeo? Uh, what kind of dirt bike have... lover are you? Um, one that doesn't pay attention to anything supercross, motocross, or anything to do with racing whatsoever. <laughs> but anyway, what's Erzberg what is Rodeo? It? Uh, is probably one of the most. Uh, it's literally the hardest race in the world. It is, to be totally honest, it's the most enduring, most difficult race in the whole world. You ever see those videos of people literally just? Riding over boulders that are as tall as humans. Wait, is that the one that is in? It's in a rock quarry in Australia. Another country that? Yes, yes, yes. I have seen that. I've watched Graham Jarvis do that multiple times. Yeah, it's insane. I didn't know it was the. I didn't really recognize the rodeo part, but Erzberg, yeah. yeah. So it's called the Erzberg Rodeo, and it's it's nuts. The winner this year was Emmanuel Let Letten Bichler. Yep, he's German. So, I don't know who he is, but he's fast as fuck, and he can ride, because that, that race is the yeah. most intense and most insane race ever, and it's long, and it's the yeah, hardest you guys haven't race ever. Checked out that, you guys haven't checked out that race, go watch it on YouTube, it's fucking insane. Billy Bolt is it's like the start of the bottom writer. of the rock quarry. Yeah, Billy Bolt's an amazing writer, he posted on his YouTube, if you want to get a good uh, feel of what it's like, but yeah, it's, it, keep going. Explain what it is. They basically start off at the bottom of Rock Quarry. I don't remember how many miles it is. I think it's probably it changes like, every year. What? 
yeah i don't know probably like roughly around like 20 ish miles maybe some years that i've seen it yeah but uh you know they're going this rock quarry it's it's basically like a lithium mine it's just massive it's an iron um, mine just like an iron mine like thousands of feet down the at the bottom of this rock quarry everybody hops on their bikes and just starts taking off and then starts climbing hills it's just insane hill climbs and then yeah you ever go watch videos there's there's bikes falling down cliffs everywhere and like the first few people make it and then everybody else is just trying to get up this massive rock hill and like nobody can make it there's people freaking flying everywhere (laughs) it's super gnarly it's crazy. And then I believe they get into some wood sections. Right? Oh, yeah. There's lots there. of wood sections. Really tight stuff. They make new wood sections almost every year. So they literally, like, take a dirt bike and they'll just cut their way through the woods. And then that trail, they'll just put arrows in the middle of the woods. And you just kind of have to keep going with the arrows. And you're going over brush, brand new brush. There's no trail. You're going over brand new brush, all this stuff and everything. And all logs and stumps and everything. And you, know, you just have to follow the arrows. But. They'll do these insanely fast sections on these roads that go up the quarry and then cut up a massive hill climb and go over these jumps and these log sections and tire sections. And then they'll cut into the woods and it'll be super tight and running through the woods and everything. And then they'll come out on insane cliff drops and through rivers and through creeks. And then they'll go through these sections where it's just a whole field of like three man, four man boulders. If you don't know like size comparison for one man, two man, three man boulders, literally a one man boulder is probably about a 50 pound rock. And so a two man is like probably a 200 pound, 300 pound rock. And then a three man is like four feet tall and, and it's insane. So these three man and four man rocks are just scattered in this massive field. It looks like it's just, it's just a side of a mountain that's like collapsed or whatever. Oops. My bad. It's the side of a mountain that's just collapsed and all fallen down on the side. And they've got these ribbons that just go right through this side hill of just massive, massive boulders. And they'll spend probably up to close to like an hour, an hour and a half, just taking their front wheel and sitting it on a boulder And then they'll hop up on top of the boulder with their back wheel and then they'll take their front wheel and move it to the side and then they'll run, get a little gas into it and pop their clutch so they can get up over these next couple boulders. It takes freaking forever to go a mile and uh, it's super hard. If you fall, you'll destroy your pipe. You'll just put a hole in your casing. So you have to be really cautious about what you're doing. And it's a, it's, been perspective to like the desert 100 and fast paced desert racing and stuff it's really short but for how uh technical it is it takes freaking forever yeah uh, that is one insane race yeah i don't wish my worst enemies on that race and people do it willingly they're <laughs> insane yeah so good job for those guys um it's fun to watch them do it because they're some of the most amazing riders to ever exist on a, like they can handle a dirt bike. Like I've never seen ways possible. Like Graham Jarvis, he's like mostly known for just how well he can control a dirt bike, what he does on dirt bikes and stuff. It's like, it's a part of his body now. It's like, it's really cool Mm -hmm. to watch if, you can look him up on YouTube and everything and watch some of his videos. He's got some pretty badass uh rock star Husqvarna videos that they put out, like videos of him just doing badass stuff. So all right, let's get in late. Should wrap this thing up. Got anything else to throw in here? No, I don't think I'm all good. Thank you all for uh watching episode number six. Uh happy fourth of July to everybody. Um, they're not watching. They're listening. Host. This is uh oh shit. My bad. <laughs> Thank you for listening. You can find us on Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram at Chain Driven or Chain Driven Pod. Um, thank you all for listening. I'm your host, Kieran. This is my co-host, Colton. 
and uh we hope y'all have a good one uh subscribe to my only fans so i could buy a dirt bike damn it all right peace out peace